Los Angeles is renowned for its idyllic weather, 75 miles of exquisite coastline, the Hollywood sign, Walk of Fame, the LA Clippers and the LA Lakers, a luxurious Beverly Hills shopping district. When it comes to food, LA has no shortage of places to eat. I'm most interested in the profound opportunity to search out the humble taco. So today, my friend and taco aficionado is Chef Katsuji Tanabe, who you may know from Top Chef and Food Network. He'll guide me through some of his favorite taco trucks and celebrated holes in the wall, which have recently gained culinary status. Based on what I learned today, I'll develop a dish with the culinary team to be featured at Waterside, the chic and spacious main dining room on the Crystal Serenity. Waterside offers Michelin-inspired cuisine with two menus. The classic options include herb-crusted rack of lamb, crispy sea bass, even creme brulee. There's also a progressive modern menu which gives you the opportunity to feast on culinary artistry through science and beautifully prepared food. What makes Waterside unique as well is that it's done at your leisure. So, where are we going? Well, we're in South Central. This guy's been making tacos since 1972. He cooks around almost a thousand pounds every weekend. Uh, he starts cooking at 2 a.m. And, start, and finishes at 6, and by 3 p.m. he's completely out. Goodness gracious. From, this is, how would anyone find this, though? It, it's, you just need to know, and you're not going to see, like, any hipsters, no pictures, no Instagram. It's literally, you need to find the place. There's no sign. There's nothing. This is it? Yeah. This is, this is what I call a hole in the wall. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. So this is a free sample? Yeah. yeah. Look at the size. It's just, you know, oh and you have gosh. the pork belly, a little bit of the cuerito, the skin. Um, and obviously, you need to have something spicy, so, you know. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, this is a whole chili pepper? That's a whole chili pepper. I am English, you know. Well, don't. <laughs> something, that I, something that I like to do is you, just, you, you, you grab it. Yeah. Take a bite. Take a bite first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. I'm folding it. Mm. Mm. That this, is so tender. This is what 30 years of tradition tasted. No. So, what this thing is, is the carnitas from different areas, it's the, the chilies or the salsa, you know? I don't think I've ever had a more authentic style Mexican taco. I've only had them in restaurants. We eat carnitas mainly in Mexico on the weekends, early in the morning, so you have all day to work them out because they're heavy. He's only kept the recipe for family. Do you think, could you ask him? After tasting this, I want to know, will he adopt me? La familia. See? Daddy! Oh, my son, I've been waiting all these years. I am going to get us the recipe. After eating a tender, melt-in-your-mouth pork carnitas, it was time to head over the other side of town to meet with Chef Wes at Gorilla Tacos. There is no such thing as an authentic taco. Uh, in my opinion, tacos can be from whatever city you're from, whatever pueblo you're from, whatever neighborhood you're from. I'm from Los Angeles, it's a big melting pot, so that's why you'll see Japanese influence, you'll see Mexican influence, you'll see a little bit of French influence. Because even like in parts of Mexico, people will argue, this pueblo does it one way, my family does it one way, two uncles with two different ways, my grandma, their grandma. What we do is use the tortilla as a canvas. 
We use it to showcase the ingredients, whether it be a fried piece of cod, whether it be wild boar, sweet potato, uh, some fresh hamachi or some, uh, some tuna. So that's, that's really what we use it for. It's a, like a blank slate. Like I don't have any borders. Um, so it's very much unrestricted. I use what I want. We can be shepherds of our ideas and our, you know, our flavors and our motivations and put them on a plate and have people enjoy them. Yeah, there's something really comforting about the taco being like something that you can eat with your hands and you pick up and it's very, it's very primal. You know what I mean? It comes from somebody's hands, making it right there. Nine times out of 10, it's more in front of you. So you're getting it, you're seeing them make it, you're seeing like the work that goes behind it and you're eating it instantly. It's like instant it's gratification. Uh, for me, the taco, like it has to have a couple different things. There's gotta be crunch in it, which most of my tacos all have that crunch, some savory, something uh, unctuous or creamy, or kind of rich, and then also a nice freshness from the herbs and spice. I thought that taco at Wes's was phenomenal. It's been wonderful seeing you, mate. Thank you so much. Now, good old Leo's tacos, get an Al Pastor taco, okay? Done. Bye, Until bro. next time, thank you, brother. Taco's Leo is in a gas station. A gas station. This is on the corner of a big intersection. Come on. For $6, you can get four tacos. Look at that. Now you can see why tacos have become so popular in Los Angeles. Perfectly cooked pork and toasted tortillas, a squeeze of lime. Remember, you want that brightness on a taco, that acidity. You've got the onions, the cilantro, pico de gallo, and some shaved pineapple. Now that is a jam-packed taco for $1.50. I can hardly close it over. Should we try it? Should we? There we go. Mm. Mm. The tortilla is toasted, it's still warm. The meat's perfectly cooked, it's got a nice char on. To me, this is exciting. In a gas station, yes, you heard it, in a gas station. From the inspiration we've gathered in Los Angeles, we're going to be making a deconstructed taco. I had a meeting with the chefs. I'm blessed as well, because we're gonna get several folks in to do a taste test and give their feedback on this deconstructed taco. It's time for me to head in the kitchen and join the chefs and get it ready. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, I'm so happy you get to be taste testers before we serve this in this beautiful restaurant. From Los Angeles, we got inspiration from the taco. We visited three places, so we've broken down the taco. Wow, that is gorgeous. At the top, we have a tomatillo and almond sauce, dried chilies, tomatillos in there. We've roasted them, fresh garlic, almonds, and then we've pureed them. Next to that, you can see that we've got a quenelle of pico de gallo. When you go to an al pastor place, you'll see pineapple on the top. When it comes to the hamachi, we've taken a hamachi and we've cured it. We've taken some chilies, some salt, and we put them into the blender to make this powder. Light dusting on the fish, and then wrap the fish in kombu. The kombu's gonna give it glutamates. 
For the tortilla taste, rather than having a tortilla, what you pick up, we took some tortillas, we took some corn nuts, and we added it to some cream and milk. And we've made this infusion, finally. We have some avocado. We've taken some fresh avocado that's beautifully ripe, mixed that with some caramelized onion to add some sweetness. And then a small amount of dehydrated corn, just to add that beautiful corn flavor that we have when we have tacos. What I would suggest is slice the fish up and bring all the elements together. I'm gonna to head back to the kitchen and I'll come back out and I want to see if you feel this deconstructed taco should be on the menu at Waterside. Bon appetit. Oh my God, this is so good. Mm -hmm. Looking at the plates, it looks like you may have enjoyed our deconstructed taco. Amazing, it was spectacular, really? wasn't it? Yeah. Delicious. Do we actually feel that fish should be on the menu? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I want to give a cheers to you but also I want to give a cheers to all the wonderful culinary team that has helped this dish be served today. Here's to you. Cheers. 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 Everything we've done has built up to this moment. I'm so excited to serve this deconstructed taco.